Good morning. Welcome to Made by Me with Grey Roots. I'm Laura, Programs Coordinator here at Grey Roots Museum and Archives. I'm so glad you could join us today um, because today we're going to be talking about the pinwheel quilt. Um, so I'm going to go over some of the sewing and then some of the things you can do with it because it doesn't just have to be like a pillow cover. You could also turn it into a bag. So we'll talk about all of that. But before we get started, of course, housekeeping, this is being recorded. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat box um, and just keep your cameras and your microphones muted. And if you're watching the recorded version of this, just send us an email and we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. So today we're going to get started a bit on the craft before we visit our collections department for yet another really amazing quilt. So in your package, you'll have materials to either make a pinwheel quilt or instead of making like I have all these things here, um, the pinwheel quilt or just solids four solid squares. So I'm going to do a hybrid quilt today just to show you the different steps. Um, I got this started yesterday and I'll be able to go through some of the steps just so you know kind of how to position things when you get to sewing. Um, you also have the pattern pieces. So if you want to mix up any of the materials with something that you already have at home, go for it. Um, this is yours. You want to make sure it's exactly how you want it to look. Um, so these are just fun colors that I chose that are a nice um, cotton material. They're all pre-washed. And before you get sewing, it's always a good idea to iron um, just because they've been in a package for a little bit and may be a little wrinkled. Um, and I have my iron, ironing board set up. And after I do a little bit of sewing, we'll go over to the collections department so that I can do some ironing as well, because it's always important just to make sure that your seams are that they're straight. So we use the iron to do that. And I will show you um, while I'm thinking of it, when you are doing your ironing, you always want to press the seam away from the lighter material, just because if I press this with the peach, then I might be able to see the shadow of the stitching, the seam in it. So always press away from the lighter material so it gives you those nice clean shapes. It's very important. So iron is important, but also pressing so that it hides the seams is also important. So for the very first stitch, um, and we'll switch over here so you can see the close up, um, I'm going to connect my two smaller pinwheels. So obviously if you're doing the square quilts, um, the four square, this is not anything that you need to worry about. But for those of you doing the pinwheel, you're going to put your two little triangles. Um, I chose two different colors to put together, but again, your design, you have the supplies, you could switch it up completely, totally up to you. So I have these two together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to st stitch with a quarter inch inseam, just one of those shorter sides. Um, so I'm gonna do that quickly right now. So right now is when you should go and iron your seam so that it is pressed. So again, not towards the light side, towards the darker, but for time, I am going to just quickly do this and then I'll save that for when we go visit the collection. So when I pin this or clip it, I'm gonna make sure that they're pretty, it's gonna be pinned so that it is towards the lighter side. And then again, I'm gonna join those to make that square and I'm just gonna do another quarter inch seam. A trimming up and then when I open it 
I'm going to see that really nice um, pattern. So for this, um, I am going to sew it to the other square. So for those of you who are doing the square quilts, this is where your it's going to jump in. Um, I'm going to place it over top, but I'm also going to look at what I've already assembled here. Um, because what I'm going to want is kind of the opposite, which would be, eh, actually I like that. So I'm just thinking about how I want it to look in the final piece. And so now that I have this, or do I want that up there? Ooh, I think I like that. So now that I know that, I'm going to know that I'm going to join this peach with the turquoise or the teal triangle on this side. So I'll set this over here. And again, I'm going to be ironing all of this shortly, but I'm going to pin it over here. Now, because I'm combining, my squares are much larger than my pinned pieces. Um, so I'm just going to pin or trim those down um, when I'm done stitching so that they're the same size for when I go to assemble. So there we go. Oh, perfectionist in me is like I need to iron, but here we go. So matching up as best as possible. So again, I'm just going to trim my extra large square because when I sew it all together, I'm going to want them to be the same size because it will offset the pattern. Because um, when I found this pattern, it was very exciting. Um, but when I started putting it together, I found that the instructions did not match what my uh, output was. So. I've adapted from um, the instructions that I had found, actually from the library. So there we go. So now I have this. And so if you sew your two sets of squares together, you're gonna do two side by side, and then you're gonna do your final assembly. Now I know in the instructions, it will show you the idea of where your squares or your triangles should lay out. But again, this is yours. You can switch up the pattern. It doesn't have to be the exact same pinwheel. Um, so again, I'm gonna match these things up. And that's better. And so I'm going to stitch this and then I'm gonna press everything flat. So again, you always wanna make sure right sides are together. And I always, do an extra double check to make sure my middle, my center seams are going to line up. Otherwise it will be a little thrown off in the design because um, I can show this. And there's some wonderful, exciting things that you might be hearing in the background that's going on out here in the museum. But so here, um, so I'm a little not aligned on this one, but um, it still kind of goes together and it came together a bit better when I did my top stitching. So anyways, we're, I will let you go jump over to the collections department and see what wonderful quilt Jacob has to share with us today. Hello, my name is Jacob Fralick, a summer student at Grey Roots Museum and Archives, and this is our collections room. Today, I will be talking about this quilt, one of the artifacts in our collection. This quilt was made in 1905, as identified by its embroidery along the top, along with the words Grandma and Ariana. This quilt was made by a member of the Rouse family in 1905 that lived in St. Vincent Township, Gray County. One member of the Rouse family, Mrs. William Rouse, lived in the farmhouse building that is now a part of Morriston Heritage Village here at Gray Roots. The last owner of this quilt was Mrs. Albert Rouse. This artifact is a crazy quilt, a style that was inspired by the asymmetrical art and ceramics presented in the Japanese pavilion 
of the Philadelphia Centennial Exposition in 1876. Similarly to the art from the Japanese pavilion, crazy quilts are asymmetrical, using a variety of different fabrics and shapes, designs, and threads. The crazy quilt era lasted until around 1910. This quilt was made in 12 separate squares, each one different from the last, and stitched together to make its completely unique appearance. I'm a big fan of this style of quilt and the controlled chaos it represents. I also love how the development of this crazy quilt shows how ideas and designs between two different cultures, such as the quilting of Victorian society and the asymmetrical art and ceramics of Japanese society, can combine to create something completely new. That's all I have to say for today, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, that was an exciting quilt that Jacob shared with us. Um, and again, I'll share a link to our collections online so that you could see all of the quilts that we have in our collection and learn some about the history about the quilts there. It's always fun knowing stories behind some of the things that we get to see here at the museum. So while you were in the collection, I was stitching this together. So I have that in there and I did my ironing. Um, so now it's all about adding these extra pieces on the sides to make your larger square. Um, so as I discussed um, in practicing and doing this, I found that some of the instructions were a little, it made it smaller than it was supposed to be. Um, and I did it twice. So it definitely was the instructions, not just me. Um, but so the original instructions just had one band around the square, the pinwheel squares. Um, so to make the size to be a 12 inch square, I actually had to add on a different, another one. So eh, it's just a little bit more sewing. But for you, if you want to make it easier, instead of doing the side pieces, the top pieces, the side pieces and the top pieces, you can always sew the side pieces together to start on both sides, add them, and then sew the top and bottom pieces together and then add them. So it's kind of up to you how you want that to look. So hopefully we can kind of see this is like a stacked kind of corner. Maybe the show you a little bit with a different color. So Either way, totally up to you. Um, and you can choose whatever color you would like to be on the inside or the outside. Those two just happen to be green, um, but for this one, I decided to use green first. So I did add one um, yesterday to kind of speed things up. So you'll find there are shorter ones versus um, longer ones. So for the shorter ones, those ones are going to be kind of your left and right sides. The longer ones are your top and your bottom. So these are actually the like the size the instructions say, just not quite the right size. So I have those added and then I'll kind of just find the middle um, and then I will stitch it on. And again, just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can choose to do the keep this side up um, just so you can see and you don't have to stitch the whole length because eventually you will probably trim that. Um, so I'll show you this one quickly. There we go. Um, so all you would do for the next line, so of course you would iron, and then for the next one, after you lay it out, threads everywhere, then you can use one of the longer ones. So I'm going to do... Um, now I'm debating if I want to mix it up. So I could either do green or the other longer pieces I have are purple. Um, 
but maybe I'll just use green for now. So again, I'm just going to line it up. Give a couple clips. And again, just a quarter inch inseam. And there we go. So that's perfect. And then I would do the same thing on this side and then I would repeat it again with the purple. Um, just for time's sake, so you don't just watch me sew all morning. Um, I will stop sewing here, but so I would complete this and then this is your quilt batting. Um, so what you're going to do eventually is you will line it up. It should be a bit bigger than your finished piece, so you can always trim it when you're done. Um, but all I do is kind of get it where I want it, and then you can pin and then start sewing. So they suggest doing top stitching about a quarter of an inch from every single seam. Um, so it is a lot, but I do, I kind of liked it because it was like something I could do in front of the TV in the evenings, um, or I could do it outside. Um, I did it in quite a few spaces and I will show you. Um, so with this one, you may not be able to see it that well because I did use Funnily enough, I had thread that was the same color as the majority of these material, like the fabrics. I don't know how that happened, but so I just did, I did try some with mach machine stitching instead of hand stitching. It's okay. I kind of like the hand stitching a bit more, but it's kind of like whatever you want. You, if you have a sewing machine that has a lot of different fancy, um, stitches available then you could definitely like kind of do really something fun and funky but like for this one I did I had the purple that matched the green that matched but I didn't have the turquoise or teal so I just used the green um the lime green for all of those and I just kept it going I didn't stitch for the peach because I definitely don't have any peach thread um but like for this one I just didn't stitch the peach, but I did the green and the purple, and then I did both of the bands too. So once you have that, however you would like it to be done, all you need to do um, to finish is kind of decide what you want your piece to look like. So for this one, you will have a big square um, that will be the back. So for this one, I did the pillow form. I just got it at Michael's. Um, it's just a 12 inch one. And then you would stitch all the way around, um, like right sides together. And then I left a little bit of a hole. It wasn't big enough of a hole. I had to open it up a bit just because I apparently thought the pillow wouldn't be that hard to put in. Um, and then I stuck the pillow form in it. You could also use other stuffing to create the pillow. Um, cause it, I don't know if you guys can see that with the camera. Um, you can see like the label from the pillow through the material. Um, but you can make a pillow and then for the pinwheel bag, um, just put cardboard in here so it could stand up well. But so with this, I had, um, Again, magically, some material that worked coordinated fairly well um, with this around, lying around. And so I just measured out slightly um, a bit bigger than 12 by 12. And then I created some straps. I did have a bit of interfacing that was a little bit heavier um, that I was able to put into the straps. And then I threw... Trial and error, I made sure where the straps were, were actually gonna stay on the in outside because the first time I sewed it, they were on the inside, which I figured was what was gonna happen, but luckily it was easy to fix. 
And so all I did was just kind of stitch around and then now I can push this in and then I have a little tote bag. Um, if you have any questions with any of this, please feel free to reach out. Um, you could also get something to put inside to turn it into like a hot plate or hot pad for the table. Um, or you could even just make it into a flat piece that you can hang up on the wall um, or anything like that. Um, or if you catch the quilting bug, you can always create something and then create more of these um, and make a larger piece too. But we're just gonna look and see if there's any questions. Oh, we don't have any questions today, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, if you have any questions um, and you're watching the recorded version, don't hesitate to get in touch. And once you're finished your beautiful pieces, please send us a picture. Um, you can email it, or if you post it online, you can tag us at hashtag MBM Grey Roots. And we hope you have a really great time with this craft. So thank you so much for joining us and having a great day.